7.2 and 3, Properties of Parallelograms and Proving a Quadrilateral is a Parallelogram. Where do parallelograms fit on this diagram? Rhombuses, squares, rectangles, trapezoids, and kites. So this is just another representation of the hierarchy of quadrilaterals. Remember that quadrilaterals means four sides, any four-sided figure. So who is the top dog of the four-sided figures that also have things underneath them? That's our parallelograms. So parallelogram is our outer um, um, figure. Then you can split into either a rectangle or a rhombus. Remember that the parallelogram is the knocked over rectangle but then if it's an upright one, it's a regular rectangle, and then the rhombus is the knocked over square. It has equal sides. Then if you make a rectangle and a rhombus come together, they make a square. Then the outliers that hang out by themselves are the trapezoids and the kite. Remember, trapezoid has one, parallel, one set of parallel sides and the kite has no parallel sides. So let's talk more about parallelograms today. So parallelograms come with a lot of features. The main definition for a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite parallel sides or two pairs of opposite parallel sides. So on this diagram, we would say that this side is parallel to this side and this side is parallel to this side. The other thing that is true about parallelograms is that their opposite sides are congruent and parallel. So we can say, um, and I'm going to use uh, two tick marks. This side is congruent to this side, and I'm going to use three on this one. This side is congruent to this side. You'll see why in a minute. The other thing that's true about uh, properties of parallelograms is that their opposite angles are also congruent. So I'm going to use a different color. So this angle is congruent to this angle. And this angle is congruent to this angle. All right, the next property that's true about parallelograms is that consecutive angles are supplementary. That means they add to 180 degrees. So we're talking about this angle and this angle. If you bring those together, they make 180 degrees. That's true for these ones as well. I'm just providing one example. So consecutive angles are ones that are next to each other as you go along around the parallelogram. So these two, or these two, or these two, or these two. <laughs> Any consecutive angles are gonna be supplementary. And then the last one is that the diagonals bisect each other. They bisect each other. So our last property, you can see that these lines are not the same length. So this one that goes along this diagonal is longer than this one. So the, the two lines themselves are not the same length, but they cut each other in half at the center. So this length is congruent to this length. And then I already used three, so I have to use four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So those lengths, this length is congruent to this length and this length is congruent to this length. One more thing that can be true about parallelograms is that you can know that only one set of sides are parallel and congruent for it to be a parallelogram. So as long as it's on the same side of the parallelogram, it is also going to be a parallelogram. And then if it has any of these other features, it's a parallelogram. So they come with lots of features for them. So now we're going to use that to solve problems. Example number one, find the value of X and Y in this parallelogram. So they're telling us it's a parallelogram. So all of the above features come with this diagram, even though we're not going to label it on all of them. 
So we can see that there's an X in this length, an X here, an X here, and then there's my Y. So what you should always look for is a relationship that only works with one variable at a time. So in this case, I, can, I know that this side length is congruent to this side length, and they both have an X. So I can set those equal to each other. So X plus 18 is equal to 3X minus 2. And now I can solve for X. So minus X, 18 equals 2X minus 2 plus 2. 2x equals 20, divide by 2, and x equals 10. So now that x equals 10, now I can take a look back at my diagram that has my y value that's missing. I can't set an x and a y equal to each other, but now I know what the value of x is. So I can say 4 times 10, and now I know that this side length is 40. So y is equal to 40 because this side is congruent to this side. So always work with one variable at a time. Don't go for a relationship that has two different variables. Always go for one that has the same variable. So pause this video and go ahead and try the two examples on example two on your own. And then I'll show you. So this one's got an X and a Y, so I am not going to go for that first. But this one's got an x and a number, that's fine. 4x minus 37 is equal to 49. These opposite angles, I know I'm about to draw it really big. <laughs> Those opposite angles are congruent. So 4x minus 37 equals 49, plus 37. 4x equals 86, divide by 4, and x equals 21.5. Now that I know that x is equal to 21.5, we can substitute it back in where x is, and now I can, I'll can i be able to set it equal to this expression for y, because I know that this side length is congruent to this side length. So 4 times 21.5 minus 3. 4 times 21.5 is 86 minus 3, or 83. So now we can say that y divided by 5 is equal to oops, 5, is equal to 83. We undo division with multiplication. y equals 415. So weird numbers, but true. <laughs> okay, number three, I can see that this one's got a y and a y, and this one's got an x and an x. So it won't really matter which one I start with. I know that this side length is, or I'm sorry, this diagonal is congruent to this diagonal, and this diagonal is congruent to this diagonal. So we'll just solve two separate equations. So 2x plus 10 equals 4x minus 2 minus 2x. 10 equals 2x minus 2. Add 2. 2x equals 12. Divide by 2 and x equals 6. And now we can do the same thing with the y's. So 5y minus 16 equals 3y minus 5y. Negative 16 equals negative 2y. Divide by negative 2, and y equals 8. OK, let's continue on with some more examples. Find the indicated measure in uh, MNOP. Explain your reasoning. So um, if this is a parallelogram, which we can't quite tell that it is yet, but we can see that there are some measures. Um, we know that it's a parallelogram because they told us in the directions it's a parallelogram. So let's just go ahead and fill in some stuff we know. If this side is 26, then this side is 26. If this side is 24, then this side is 24. If this angle measure is 68, then this measure is 68. If this bisected um, length is 14, then that bisected length is 14. If this bisected length is 20.7, then this side bisected length is 20.7. And finally, what is this measure? What is that angle measure? Well, these two angles, these two angles are supplementary. So 180 
minus 68. Whoops, not 60, <laughs> not with the zero, just a degree measure. 180 minus 68 is 112. So that means that this angle measure is 112 degrees. So now let's answer the question. So PO is right there, 24. OQ is right there, 14. NO, this side, um, 26. And PQ, PQ is 20.7. All right, now we're looking for PMN. So PMN, we found that to be 112. NOP, NOP, that whole angle measure matches this whole angle measure. So it's another 112. OPM, OPM is 68. And NMO, NMO, this guy, um, right here, just this chunk is going to match just this chunk, so it's going to be 59. All right, what property of a parallelogram shows that each quadrilateral is a parallelogram? We can see that if this is an A and parallel, then these two sides are congruent, so opposite sides are uh, parallel and congruent. Cool. Next, I can see that opposite angles are congruent. And the last one, I can see that the diagonals bisect each other. Last couple of examples. Find the values of x and y that make this shape a parallelogram. So if we want this to be a parallelogram, we want our opposite angles to be congruent. But if I look here, my opposite angles, this one's got an x and this one's got a y. So what's another trait of parallelograms that can be true? These two angles, the, the consecutive angles are supplementary. So we can say 3x minus 20 plus x plus 40 is 180. Consecutive angles are supplementary. So 3x and an x is a 4x. 40 minus 20 is another 20. Minus 20, 4x equals 160. Divide by 4 and x equals 40. Now that x equals 40, I can use it to get opposite angles to be congruent. So 3 times 40 minus 20, which is going to be 120 minus 20, which is going to be 100. So now 4y is equal to 100. Divide by 4, and y equals 25. Pause this video and go ahead and try the next two examples on your own. didn't even need to do any math for the y. y is equal to 106. Opposite angles are congruent. Easy. Next. Oh, minus 1. So plus 1. So 17. It's a minus. Seventeen and seventeen. Thank you.